Yo. <laughs> Morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I'm here with Noah, or Bad Choice Noah, whatever you want to call him. That's me. <laughs> and, and we are with Argumus. Uh, as you can see, change water, yeah. which is basically like a daily thing. Well, you know, Noah's been working really hard to target train Argumus, trying to get it really tamed so that when it doesn't see the ball, it doesn't think it's food. So this is like the first time you're gonna try to hold him without the ball, and we'll see what happens, because we've gotta change his water anyway. So you're just gonna go in there, what's the plan? I don't really have a plan, you know, that's the thing. You don't want a game plan, because you expect something to happen, and if it doesn't happen, then you don't know what to do. So it's better not to have a plan. Plan is what he means. Let's see. Argus doesn't see the ball. So, do you think I should try to get the water out first? Yeah, or? let's get the water out and okay. see what he does. All right, Argus, I'm just. Oh. oh! Hey! There was a little threat display there. Is that what that was? He just said, hey, don't mess with me. I'm not going to mess with you yet, man. I'm just grabbing your water. Okay, so we're going to get the water out. But you can see, you know, it wasn't like his normal jump down. This makes it a little tricky. Okay, I got this right here. Slide the hand. Okay. So water is out. Now do you want to try to see if you can just see what happens? I don't know what's going to happen. See what happens? <laughs> Look at him. He's all puffed up right now. I think he's going to be alright though. I don't know. So He knows it's not food because if no he thought food. it was food, he you was going to already me? jump down. No so. food. No food. I don't, I'm no, I don't really know what to expect here. Hey man. That's a big whip right there. See, he's really pissed off right now. What do we do? Did you, from an expert's perspective. I would probably just slowly go, like really slowly go and try to see if you can pick him up. just go get bit? No, he won't bite you. I, he might oh, whip, he but might. he's not going to bite. I don't, I don't think he's going to bite. I don't really believe that part. I think just go for it. You're fine. You're fine. Keep going. Holy <laughs> Dad. I don't know what to do. I can't I can't grab in there. Well, I can't I grab can in it? there. Yeah, you see if he can if I can I don't get him. think I don't know if we'll be able to get him or not. He's not he's not a good mood today, I'm telling you. He's not he a good be okay. mood. And he's like as far back as you can possibly get, so. See, I think he's actually okay. See that? Oh my god, yo! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, that was scary! <laughs> you like right over face. Face. Okay, Argus, Argus, you're good, you're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. This is the first time he's ever been handled like this. It's okay, buddy. Look at how he's got his arms out, he's so cute. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> he's just flying. Whoa, it's okay. I think he's doing really good, Noah. I mean, he didn't think it was food or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, like. See, look, look at him, he's still not, because that's what you gotta do. You don't restrict their movement. You just yeah, let, just let them kind of run in. through. It's kind of weird how we like kind of flop. Yeah, he back. like goes backwards a little bit. It's a little scary because he gets whoa, by your face. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Argumus, <laughs> oh, it's okay. Man. Look at him, he's like a little puppy. It's awesome. You're a good he boy. Is awesome. I think you're making strides. This is I awesome. Know. I didn't you're doing it. This, not me. You're doing yeah, this. But it was your training with him oh, knowing it's not food yeah, yeah. that's made him so awesome, you know? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Look at him, he's puffing and huffing and He's all. fine though. He's Woo! fine. He's fine. Good boy. He's awesome. See, we could have never done this a month ago. No, probably not. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> oh my god, he's so cool. Okay, buddy. <laughs> All right, well, we'll clean his water up and we'll get him back in. And this will be, what we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of, the idea of gaining trust is that we'll end this training session on a good note. Where basically I'm just going to release him back in. Be like, look at nothing bad happened. And then the next time it's going to get better and better and better. Just continuously gaining his trust. But I couldn't be more happy with this. This is absolutely incredible. So let's, uh, yeah. let's get his water cleaned up and we'll get you back in there, Mr. Argus. How's that sound? All right, water is in. There we go. And now time to put him back. It's so awesome. I mean, I tell you, I'm so geeked on this. Like, it's so cool. All right, Argus, listen. It's going to be a nice little gentle movement. See that? You're all good, buddy. Good job, boy. Woo! -hoo. How awesome is that? Take that, Forrest. I was kind of inspired by Forrest, you know, handle all those croc monitors and stuff like that. No, you're doing a great job of getting him to the point where he's ready. He is absolutely going to be puppy dog tame in no yeah, time. I mean, yeah, he did great today. Even off the camera, he was just chilling. He was like super calm 
awesome. I know. What a cool thing. I, I'll be honest with you, I never thought we were gonna get to that point and so quickly. So uh, there you guys have it. If you have a lizard and you wanna tame something, don't give up. That animal was insane and now it's gonna be awesome. So I'm excited. I mean, what a way to start the day. Really making a concerted effort to take Sunfire out a lot more because I've always said that I think she's gonna be one of my really good big handling snakes as she gets older, but she's definitely really a runner. So just the more you take her out, the better she's gonna get because she gets more habituated to handling and you just got to think about like what the snake wants you can see I'll let her run through my hand and sometimes what you can do with a snake like this is you can kind of twist around and she'll kind of go like that so if she's getting away from me like really far I'll just twist her like this and then she kind of just wraps around me. So it's just little things like that. The other thing that can happen is if a snake is a little bit bitey, you can do the same thing. If it's starting to come at you where it's not like a really super aggressive thing, but you could potentially get bit. And away from it like this, it kind of changes the animal's mind a little bit. When it comes to retics, this doesn't work with all snakes, but it certainly works with retics. But I want this snake to get really big, you know, to be an 18 foot plus snake. And I think she is super cool. She's a beautiful snake. And I think she's gonna be a great animal animal ambassador because although she's a little food aggressive she's not a defensive animal at all she's a really placid snake as you can see but she definitely loves to move a lot and she loves to climb so she is a really cool snake so whenever I get a chance to take her out I absolutely do and she's been at the front of her cage an awful lot lately which has given me a lot more opportunity to spend time with her I know you guys are always seeing me walk around the Reptarium and you see all of the cages and you see all that stuff but I want to give you a proper kind of behind the scenes tour of some of the things that you don't see like you know the passageways behind the cages in between these cages here so let's go ahead and just go back here really quick and you get an idea it looks much different back here than it does out front. You can see these are just two by four construction with of course all of this polyurea rocking on it. The backs of the cages, this is what they look like. The back of guacamole here. Let's go see guac really quick. This is how we actually access guac right here. You can see, look at how beautiful guac is right there. But he definitely doesn't like people messing with him. So it's kind of nice to have him in a place where he really doesn't get messed with too much. We just go in there for cleaning and feeding and stuff like that. But again, just two by four construction right here uh, with the backs of these things and the reason we have this is that way we can access the back of the exhibits right so if we want to take this exhibit out in order to do husbandry or whatever we can literally slide it out right here we have enough space in this area where we can actually set it down do our maintenance and stuff like that there are a couple cages that only access from the back obviously the gator tanks we've got our warma tank back here but uh, this is a really great area and I do love it you can see we've got a bunch of these fake plants over here these are actually going up on the outside of this place just to kind of finish it off a little more we just got to get to that but it's a nice area back here if you want to work somewhere without the public right so even when we're open for the public if something is going on where we need to get back here and do something we can do it without being around all the people if you get my mean so I like the little behind the scenes area and this room is absolutely incredible <laughs> and then another not such nice behind the scenes of course behind these cages here we do have to access them just to change bulbs if something else goes on but this is our access point actually in the tourist pen and this just literally bends back here like this and you can see this is the access point back here that you can walk down it's not a lot of space it's only about a foot that you have to just kind of shimmy through and you can see there's the drain for Lucy's tank and all that stuff back here so it's a little behind the scenes that we can go and actually access behind the cage if again there's a probe for a heat pad or a plug or a light goes out or something like that we've got to be able to access it trust me you don't want to go back there if you're claustrophobic and I'll take you guys back where I keep salt and pepper because I've always said that we don't keep salt and pepper out on display when we're not open for the public and that's just so that we can keep a closer eye on them but we are in the process of actually getting to a position where they'll be out there all the time probably within the next few weeks not quite there yet I'll explain that as it goes on so like that but this is actually the back of our gator tank just to give you an idea what this looks like too again two by four construction this is the actual tank itself right here the filter is down here and then this is the actual cave looking stuff the back of the polyurea right so this is what the stuff looks from the behind the scenes of course this is salt and pepper right here we just keep in a habitat like this they've got a basking light right here they can get out of the water but this way we can keep them really clean number one and we can really keep track of all of the weights or any other information that we want to uh, and we can control the amount of food that they have really simply we're actually 
actually redoing their exhibits out in the public to keep them out there all the time, but we have to redo it so we can access them differently. So that's something we're gonna do relatively soon again within the next week or two or something like that. And then of course, these are the back of the cages. So you get an idea of the foam of the back of the cages. And then right back there is another access point that we can access behind the cages to get back there to service the lights and stuff like that, just like it is on the other side for the tourist thing. So you can actually access that from the front over by where people come in, or you can access it back right there and it goes all the way down. Again, not the ideal thing. I wish I had two or three feet instead of one foot, but hey, it works out. So there it is, the kind of little bit behind the scenes of what's going on with the gator area and the behind the scenes over there. Eric, man, did you guys no, dude. know what telling you about Argamas? Yeah, he was, Isn't like a little crazy? baby. Isn't I'll probably crazy? go snuggle with him. Oh my gosh, you have to. I mean, that is so cool to see that progress, right? No, it's got me excited. It's, it's from all your I little tap training, showing them there's food, there's yes. a food time and a play time. Exactly. Food time and a play time. And That's so cool. I might just steal the, uh, the business credit card and go buy me some more monitors. Dude, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I really yeah. almost just bought a lace monitor just recently, a oh, Bell's Face oh lace monitor. God. That's one of the animals I would love to own for oh, sure. So I think we might do that, the Bell's Face. But I do have another monitor that I might be getting maybe as early as next week. Ooh. Not 100% sure, but I'm not going to tell you guys about it. Oh. It's oh, really, no. it's really oh, cool. No, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be incredible. Also, shh, don't say anything. Don't say anything. But you have a couple. Do you, are all your lizards tame? Oh, they're pretty, super tame. Oh, okay. Super tame. Yeah, yeah at home. except for the frilled lizard, as you know. Oh, oh yeah. Grass. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's got a real unique training technique. Okay. If they if they act good, throws them a KFC bone. Oh, KFC. KFC. Yeah. yeah. Could guys, don't, guys, no don't, uh, don't, uh, don't ever, don't ever <laughs> listen to it. He doesn't feed them KFC bones, trust me. Don't feed your monitor lizards KFC people. I always say that I'm so blessed to have so many amazing supporters like you guys because no matter what happens, you guys always put a smile on my face. And even when I'm having kind of an off day, you guys are sending me things, you know, different kind of pick-me-ups, commenting and stuff like that. I'm gonna open up a couple packages really quick. You guys are amazing. Let's see, this is from Terry and Gail. Just wanted to thank you for your friendliness and hospitality since our recent visit. Uh, your Reptarium is awesome, so thank you guys for coming to visit. But again, they sent me something, so I definitely want to take a look and see what it is. Oh my gosh, this is awesome! Oh, what the heck, man? This is crazy. I'm not even sure what this is. It looks like a pen, but it's, uh, oh, it is a pen. It's like a really heavy-duty pen that is absolutely awesome. Oh, and it's got Bella on it. I don't know if you guys can see. Oh my gosh, it's got my girl Bella. This is amazing. This thing weighs like 10 pounds. I, well, okay, I'm exaggerating. But the point is, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, and again, you guys are always just so amazing when you're sending me things in. Thank you for coming to visit. It's absolutely incredible to have you guys here. So thank you so much. This one says to open on the vlog. So I am gonna go ahead and open it up on the vlog. And this is from, let's see, who is this from? Uh, Sharon Reeves. What do we have here? Oh, it's a snake shirt. Let's see here. Bam, look at that. <laughs> it's very sparkly. Thank you, Sharon. And you comment on all my stuff, tweets, all kinds of things. So you're amazing. Uh, I love it to death. Uh, definitely. Definitely gonna sport this one. It's absolutely cool. I tell you what guys over the last month or so, you know There's been some ups and downs you guys follow it online and stuff like that so a bunch of people sent me postcards from all over the place and and it really is heartwarming. I can't thank you enough. This is from my friend Anna over in Sweden and it's just got a bunch of really cool stuff. She came to see me and Lori when we were in Italy and just kind of said hi. Uh, we got from Atlanta. This is amazing. This is from Jason. So thank you, Jason. And again, on all of these postcards, there's great, unbelievable, inspiring messages of just support. So thank you guys. This one's from Robert Edwards. This is from Excelsior, Missouri. And if I'm not mistaken, this is also from Excelsior, Missouri. And this is Jennifer Edwards. So I'm assuming you guys are a couple or related anyway. So thank you guys for that. And again, you know, it's so, it's so heartwarming. I tell you, this is North Carolina. I got this beautiful card as well as an amazing letter here from the Netherlands. Uh, thank you for that. We've got <laughs> Kit Kats mode activated. Absolutely love it. And this is from Angela. So uh, just a bunch of postcards and letters. I don't know that I could ever express how much it means to me because 
you guys lift me up when I'm feeling down or I'm feeling a little overwhelmed or I just don't have the energy to get through some of these long, long days. And then I read this stuff and I see your stuff and it, it just, it's such a blessing. So thank you guys for coming along on this journey with me. Truly being able to share my life with you guys is one of the most amazing things I could ever imagine. I can't thank you guys enough for not only your support with watching and commenting and hitting that like button, but also sending me stuff that uplifts me. So you guys are amazing and I truly don't know if I'm worthy of your guys' support. So I hope that I somehow make you proud of what I'm doing here. So, um, okay, I just wanted to share that with you because it was so heartwarming to me. This was Lori's project for today. Well, she had a lot of other things going on, but she <laughs> did this. And I just wanted to show you because I think it's important when you're in business or whatever, if you want a really advanced hobby, whatever the case may be, is to represent yourself as best as you can and professionally as you can. So these are the black totes you can see right here that we actually take animals to in the zoo to you. And uh, they just look kind of plain and kind of, you know, black plastic. So Lori ended up picking up this. And uh, what did you do? You just kind of stuck it on there? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to find something to make it look like a wood crate. And then I found this uh, contact sticky paper that looked like wood. It's perfect. So again, you know, now it's going to look more like a wood shipping crate. We're going to put like live animals on here, the Reptarium logo. That way when we show up to these zoo to you parties, birthday parties, school events, whatever the case may be, it actually looks professional like uh, you're getting a shipment off a boat of a bunch of live cargo. So uh, it's just little things like that that I think is really cool. I just wanted to kind of inspire you. Again, it doesn't take a tremendous amount of money, just a little bit of ingenuity and uh, your business or hobby will look more professional. So uh, good job, Larry. Thanks. And with that said, I'm going to end the vlog. Wish you guys an amazing day. You guys are absolutely incredible. Make sure to be kind to someone. I'm promising you, I'm going to see you tomorrow.